Hello and welcome to Replay Value. Good direction is hard to define. And I think that's in large part because the word has been sanded down to the point where it doesn't really mean anything and is just another generic line to put in a criticism or analysis. So let's take a quick second and actually rediscover the meaning here. Direction is the execution of how the concept is conveyed in the narrative. There's a huge variety in the scope here. It can be as macro as how the themes are carried from premise to conclusion to the specific details in one shot. From how the score is used in one scene to how a character's journey is reflected through the color palette over the course of the show. Direction is not the word spoken by the character, but the tone with which they are spoken. It is not the specifics of plot details, but the way those details are given life on screen. The direction is the vision. It's what makes a sequence designed to make you consider the majesty of the forest more engaging than a generic tabletop conversation constructed only to vomit exposition. Eventually, I'll make a video going through commonly used terms and analysis and criticism so that we, as a community here on Replay Value, have a shared understanding of what certain words mean. But until then, I'll keep on using my intros to define words before quickly switching gears to the topic at hand. And would you look at the time? It's SSSS Gridman. Quadruple S Gridman has been getting a lot of attention for reasons, not just for those assets, but also for its solid understanding of framing shots, subtle details, and explosive fight scenes. And hey, would you look at that? It has good direction. Scenes are generally well composed and strung together, and even when it does something weird that I'm not a particular fan of, it's at least trying something new which I can appreciate. I've chosen a particular scene from episode 4 of Gridman because I think it highlights why having clear direction is important for a scene, and how we can convey a concept beyond just dialogue through shot composition, sound design, setting, and pacing. The opening three minutes of Gridman's fourth episode take the plot element of Akane's goal in the opening scene and utilizes that to show character relationships, what Rika desires, and our characters' personalities, all without necessitating being told anything, but rather by showing it. Our opening shot is Akane bouncing her foot in irritation, which we can put together because of the anxious nature of this action and the way the line is being delivered. <laughs> This continues until the alien being begins to speak, which brings Akane to stopping her bounce. Either the alien's presence is calming for her, or she's refocusing that energy elsewhere. Then there's a wide shot to reconfirm that Akane's room is still littered with trash bags and kaiju figures, while establishing that Akane wants to confirm Gridman's identity through dialogue. This is where she's refocused that frustrated energy from earlier, before we bounce to the title card. The title card has the sound of cicadas, which primes us for the cut to Rika's hot summer day, visually represented by the heat distortion and bright sunlines. Rika stands alone at the bus station before Akane arrives, causing Rika to take out her earbuds. The two stand together at the station, and from this far away position it would look as though they're close. But it isn't until we get a closer perspective that we see that this closeness is an illusion. They're actually pretty far apart in the construction of these two shots. Hell, there's even the window frame splitting the two in this one. And sure enough, Rika mentions that it's been a while since they've talked like this, which Akane says she didn't realize. As they grab their seats, Rika is surprised that Akane walks past past her. We see in this shot that she made room for Akane to sit next to her. This mini sequence makes it clear that although Rika wants to have a closer relationship with Akane, Akane doesn't seem particularly interested in Rika's attempt at reaching out, illustrated through Akane creating space between her and Rika and using her phone instead of continuing the conversation. The two sit in silence for a bit, and again we get this illusion of them being close from afar. The windows are empty because of the sunlight, so the bus becomes isolated from the world. And I like the framing here because it highlights the solid position that Rika is currently in. Akane is really underplayed in the shot due to the bars and the shadows. Akane gets to the whole reason why she's there by asking why Rika's been talking with Yuta so much. But she continues to be entirely disinterested in Rika, not even bothering to make eye contact and ignoring her brush off attempt. These are two characters who are alone even when together, as the shots are designed to isolate them. Even though Rika looks back to Akane and we can even see her phone in this shot, it is clear that this desire for closeness is one-sided, as the tight close-up of Akane shows no change in her eyeline. The following pause really highlights how alone Rika is.
seven seconds before being broken up by the bus stop announcement. It takes 17 seconds for the conversation to continue, with the first new shot in the sequence to change up the flow. Akane is now leaning forward, engaging with Rika as this happens. The phone is put away and the two look close again. She can't get the answers she wants without fulfilling Rika's desire for a return to their close relationship. And this carries over to the group date later, which Rika only goes on because Akane says she's going. We aren't explicitly told that Rika wants to be closer with Akane until later, but the direction in this scene makes it clear far before we reach that point. And more importantly, we can feel the distance between these two characters through the shot composition, the timing of the sequence, and the settings utilized between the bus stop and the bus itself. There are also a lot of really great small details packed into this episode. From Rika's icon being her and her friends to highlight how much she values relationships, to Akane taking her bag causing Rika's to fall over, mimicking how Rika now no longer desires to be involved in this group date. One of my favorites is the not-so-subtle Eva reference in the elevator. There is something very satisfying about holding onto a shot like that, letting the irritation of Akane wash over the scene. It's too early to say whether Goodman will stay at this level of form. Certainly it'll remain a discussed show if only because Trigger and Rika, but for now, Gridman is a blast to watch and a great example of how good direction can convey the essence of a concept through every aspect of its production. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like and comment with your thoughts, subscribe for more videos, and follow me on Twitter for my live analyses and future projects. Link in the description. We'll be back real soon with another video, but until then, thanks for watching.